I think someone on the retreat said, I, it's so weird, all these years I've had this idea that if I, was, if I was present, then I wouldn't feel sad. And now I realize that presence and sadness can coexist. Or all these years I've had this idea that if I was present, I wouldn't experience doubt. But actually now I realize that presence and doubt can coexist. Presence is just the whole, it's the holding field. Anything can arise in presence. Any thought that has ever been thought, any sensation, any feeling that has ever been felt. It's, it's funny because, you know, I, being the guy on the, at the front for all these years, I get all kinds of projections, you know, that I'll think people imagine so many things about me because I'm a spiritual teacher. Um, sorry, I don't know why I had to say it like that. But. <laughs> I still haven't worked out what spiritual teacher is all, all these. I, I believe we're all spiritual teachers, we're all spiritual teachers. Um, but it's funny, being the guy at the front, you know, people have all these, I'm sure you guys may have some ideas about, about me. Um, you know, this, this idea that uh, Jeff, because he's the guy at the front, because he, he writes all these books about non-duality, he must, he, must, he must know what he's talking about. He must, you know, he's some kind of expert. Um, he has some kind of privileged knowledge. He, he must be in some other state or he must, or yeah, the same thing like Jeff, he must be in a state 24 seven of, of acceptance or pure love and pure bliss. I once got an email, this, I, I even once got an email literally that some guy, it was this like 20 page email about some Indian mythology thing. At the end, he said, Jeff, I have one question. Do you, do you still eat breakfast? Because he had this idea that enlightened people don't eat breakfast. It was, I was like, this is my life now. <laughs> I do eat breakfast, by the way. Um, but like one, you know, one of these ideas is that Jeff, will, he, uh, I guess he never doubts this. Like I, I guess he never doubts. And this is, this is what the hardest thing to explain to people is I, I'm, um, I'm full, I am full of doubt. Like walking, walking onto this stage today, I am, I am, I, I'm in a state of profound doubt, profound doubt. You know, what I, if I could put words to that doubt, would be I, I don't have anything, I don't know anything, I don't have anything to say, I don't have a teaching, I don't, I don't know if what I'm saying is true. I mean, it feels deeply true, but I can't claim some absolute truth and dogma. You know, I think what's the difference is perhaps is that I'm not at war with that doubt. I've fallen in I've fallen in love with this with this doubt. I begin I've over the years I've come to see it as a as a strength, not a weakness. Doubt is um doubt is beautiful. I um in Zen they they distinguish between two kinds of doubt. Uh self-doubt and, and great doubt or little doubt or regular doubt and and, and great doubt. So self-doubt or regular doubt. Is that, is that kind of, um, oh God, what's wrong with me? Should I be, I don't know if I should be experiencing this or what, why am I, you know, that, that kind of um, voice that's in our heads most of the day. Great doubt is, is, is really um, connected with this, this true meditation that I talk about. Great doubt is um, coming to your experience with, with the eyes and the, the, the open heart of a child coming to your experience from this place of not knowing, great doubt. Wow, I, 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 um, I'm experiencing this sadness right now. Uh, little doubt, self-doubt is, oh, what's wrong with me? Why am I experiencing sadness? How do I get rid of sadness? Maybe I should eat something or go and get on Facebook or maybe switch on Netflix or whatever, like distract myself. Um, by the way, we don't want to make that wrong. We don't want to make that bad. That's just what, that's what we do. That's, it's habitual. That's what we were taught. We were taught to run away from ourselves. Our parents probably did it. We were taught to distract, distract from difficult feeling, sensation, affect. So that's habitual. But great doubt says, um, wow, the sadness. Sadness is here. I'm, I'm curious about sadness. I want to, I don't know about sadness, right? I want to know, I want to know more about this sadness. I want to, I want to feel it. I want to, 
pay attention to it. I want to be with it. I want to be present with it. That's the voice of great doubt. There's so many experts in the world. In, in order to really understand what I'm talking about, you have to be an amateur the expert. There's no, um, the expert can't, the expert can't get this. It's too simple. To be an amateur, the am amateur, I think the word is from French, amateur means um, lover. The amateur is, is the lover. The amateur is the one who is still in love with life. The amateur is the one who is still in life with, still in love with present experience. The amateur is the one who is in love with their doubt. The amateur is the one who is in love with a pressure in the head or a, you know, the voice, the voices in the mind. The, the amateur is the one who is in love with this wonderfully imperfect moment. The expert knows too much. The expert can't get in. And there's a lot, there's a lot of experts in this world. So I, I speak to you as one who used to be a, who used to be an expert. Until one day, I just, I just, I fell in love. Instead, it was, it was exhausting being the expert, having all the answers. I fell in love with present experience, with the doubt, 